What is up, world? My name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. We are almost done with this playlist, guys. I hope you guys are sticking with me. The next video is going to be the most important video in this whole series. So, so if you've gotten this far, you got to watch the next one. Before we get into that, we first need to cover how to create tags and do releases in Git. So in this video, we'll first talk about versioning, how to actually change the version number and the build number in Xcode, and how to commit that to our Git history. Then we're going to talk about creating tags. Tags is literally putting a tag on a commit. So think about your commit history as thousands of commits. You can then go in and tag certain ones as like special commits. Maybe this is where a big feature was merged. This is where a release was. And so we can actually create tags on all of the commits in our commit history. After we update our version and we create a tag for a new release, we're then going to want to actually go to GitHub and mark that as a official release in the repository. So we'll talk a little bit about how we do that as well. And then we're going to wrap up the video with a full example of doing all of this sequentially. So with that said, let's jump into Xcode and release our app. Welcome back, everybody. We are learning Git and source control, and we are almost done with this playlist. Uh, we actually have two videos left, this one and the next one. And the next one is the most important video in this entire playlist. But before we get there, we have to cover this video. So far, we've talked about all this cool stuff. Cloning, committing, staging, stashing, pushing, pulling, merging, rebasing, cherry picking, PRs. Uh, let's add in a couple of other things that we covered in this playlist. We covered protecting branches. We covered code owners covered git ignore we covered readme and and now we're going to cover releases which includes tags and versioning all right so that's what we're going to do now so let's pretend like we're working in this project and we're ready to release this to the app store so the first thing i'm going to do is go into my project navigator and i'm going to increment the build and version number so I'm going to talk a little bit about just these numbers for a second. The bundle identifier, this is the app bundle ID. So if you were to change this bundle ID ever, it would be pushing to the app store as a different app. So you basically never change your bundle ID unless you want a second app. So the bundle ID stays the same, but the version, the build, we can then increment. And I've talked about this in, in other playlists as well. Different teams have different strategies on how to update the version and build number. Generally speaking, if you are building an app for the first time and it is not yet released to the public, you want to put your version below 1.0. 1.0 generally means first release to the public. So if I'm just developing, I'll probably make this 0.0.1. .0 so generally, when you have three numbers in the version, the first number is the most important. This is going to be the major version. Second one is going to be the minor version. And then third one is going to be the patch version. So generally, if there's big updates, you increment the major version. If there's just regular updates between the last version and this version, maybe, maybe you're just adding a feature, but most of the app is the same, you're going to increment the minor version. But maybe the app's actually staying the same and you're just fixing a bug. Then you're going to increment the patch version. It's generally how teams do it. So you increment version numbers, but you also can increment build numbers. Uh, previously, going back maybe five years ago, a lot of people would put the build numbers as the date. So you would do like 2024, March 3rd. And so my build number will increment, but I will change it with the date. But more recently, especially since Xcode Cloud has launched, people are just incrementing the build number as a number always. So it used to be something closer to, I'm going to release version 1.0, and that I'll call that build one. And then when I make some update and I go 1.0.1, I'll make that build two, 1.0.2, I'll make that build three. Then let's increment up to 1.1.0 and I'll make that build four. And then eventually we're going to get up to version 2.0.0. And at that time I would reset this down to one again. However, recently I've seen teams just constantly incrementing this forever. So even when I go up to version two, I just increment this one more digit as well. I think this is the most common approach now. So every time we increment any sort of version number, we just increment the build number by one. This is in line with how Xcode Cloud does it. And I think that's why people are migrating to it. So generally speaking, we're going to start with 0.0.1 .0 .0 and build one. 
Let's go ahead and commit that. We can see that it's in our project file here. We want to commit it. I'm going to put in the commit name, I'll say release, and I'll just say, I'm going to put this as a clean, and I'll say increment build version to 0.0.1. .0 and then I will stage it and commit it. All right, so now I have a commit specifically related to incrementing this build version. You don't have to do it, but I like to do it so I can see in my commit history when the actual version has changed. So we've incremented the build version here. Now, generally when I'm actually going to release it, I do a very similar commit. So I'll come in, I'll come back into Xcode and let's just pretend like we fix some code here. Let's set this to false and we'll do our commit and we'll say feature, finish feature. Let's commit that. And now we're ready to actually push this and release this to the public. So let's go into our source control. Let's increment to version 1.0.0. Let's update our build number by one increment and let's commit this. And I'll mark this as release and let's do version 1.0.0. And then I will put in parentheses the build number, which is two. The increment, the marketing version is 1.0 and let's stage it and commit it and push that up to GitHub. So now I've created a release for 1.0.0. So the first thing I want to talk about was versioning. How you actually want to do versioning in your app is up to you. But what I explained is the most common and you don't have to create a commit for the release. You don't have to commit, create a commit when you increment the version. I like to though, so that I can see it in the commit history. So now I'll go and actually release this app. So I'll go into Xcode. I'll go into product and archive and I'll archive the build and then I'll upload it to the app store. I'm not going to go through those motions right now, but Releasing to the app store is actually different than releasing on our GitHub. So I can archive and I can push it to the app store and I can push it and release it in the app store. But our GitHub project, so if I go back to the repo here, will not have any idea what's happening in app store or app store connect. The GitHub repo is not connected to app store connect. It doesn't know about the releases. So we also want to increment our release in our GitHub so that everybody knows what the latest release is for this project or this package. So if I click on the releases here, I can see that there are no releases right now. Let's go ahead and create a new release. When you create a release, it asks you to choose a tag and we have no tags because we haven't made tags yet. So next thing we're going to talk about is tags. If you go back into Xcode, when you're looking at the commit history, especially the repos here, you can actually right click on any commit and create a tag. Think of tag like you're tagging that commit as an important commit. So among the thousands of commits that are in your history, a couple of them might have tags on them. So these are going to be our important commits. And generally that's going to be big merges or new releases. So for example, this is a release. So when I created that release, I probably would also want to tag that with a tag. Now the tag here, you can put whatever you want. I'm going to just do 1.0.0 as the tag name. Let's go ahead and click create. There's a little purple tag here in Git crack. And I can see that tag as well. Uh, one thing to, to know though, is that these tags are locally and we need to push the tag to be remote as well. So right now, if I refresh my release here, I can't see the tag. So I created the tag, but it did not actually push to GitHub. I can now integrate and push. And when I go to push all this time, we've been clicking push, but we never said to include the tags. So now I want to include the tag as well. When I go ahead and push this, if I was doing this in Git Kraken, I would right click and push it to the origin, but let's do it through Xcode and let's push it. So now when I go back to GitHub, the actual repo should have a tag on it. So when I go to create a release, create a new release now. I can choose the tags. The tag is which commit am I pointing at for this release? So this is our tag. How you want to write your release notes is up to you. Some people are very detailed public repos where like Firebase, where it's a lot of people are using this and they need to know all the changes. This can get pretty long, but for personal repos and like side projects or yourself, I don't really write much. I would just write here like initial release or something like that, or maybe like if I just added a new feature, add X feature, initial release. I like to include the date that I'm doing the release here as well. So I'll just say released on March 3rd, 
2024. And let's go ahead and publish it. You can also save it as a draft or a pre-release if it is actually not out in production yet. Go ahead and publish it. Just like that, we now have a release on GitHub. Let's do one more before we wrap this up. Go back into Xcode. Let's pretend like we changed some code again. Let's create another release. Call this, maybe this is a patch. I wanted to fix settings view. Let's stage it, let's commit it. And now this was a patch. So now we're gonna release it and we wanna increment it as a patch. So 1.0.1, let's go build three. And let's commit that. I'm gonna say here, release. Let's go version 1.0.1 .1, in parentheses, build three, stage it, commit it, integrate. Let's push it up to GitHub real quick and let's find that commit. Where's the commit? 1.0.3. Let's give that a tag, tag it up as 1.0.3. Some people like to name these as V1.0.3. Some people actually put in not the build number and they'll actually say version or feature or actually be a little more specific in the tag, but I like to use the actual build number. Let's go 1.0.1. .1. Let's go ahead and click create. And let's go ahead and push that with the tags back up to GitHub. So in GitHub, let's do another release now. And we're going to say, okay, let's draft a new release. Choose a tag, 1.0.1. .1. I'll do this 1.0.1. .1. Let's put in the date here of March 3rd, 2023. And then some info on this release. Now we're going to click generate release notes. And this is an awesome feature. It's going to know that the previous tag was 1.0.0. .0. This is going to generate notes based on that change log. Now we don't have anything here because we didn't actually do any merges. But if we had branched and merged, all of those merges would come up in the change log here. So generally, I always click generate release notes in between releases. Let's go ahead and publish this release. And now we've published our second release. We can see our releases page starting to come together here. And this time include the date up here. Again, just a personal preference. You, so I create tags mostly for releases, but you can also create tags uh, for other things as well. You don't need to put 1.0.1. .1. So for example, down here, maybe we did some major updates, some major merge, and we could have created a tag like docs, docs fix March 3rd, 2024, 03. So March. So March, 2024, and we can push that up to GitHub as well. Not only do we have merge history, we also have tags to highlight specific commits in the history. So if I wanted to go back, if I had thousands of commits and I wanted to go back to version 1.0 or version 2.0 or version 5.0 from five years ago, I'll just look for the tags. And it's really nice, at least in Xcode, we have this tags folder here so you can see all the tags as well so you can see all the major releases and clicking on a tag is just like clicking on a branch you can check out a tag and switch to that tag as well all right that's it for this video we learned how to do versioning how to add tags how to put a release on github and in the next video we're going to talk about possibly the most important video in the series which is git flow thank you guys for watching as always my name is nick this is swiftful thinking and i'll see you in the next video